Okay, um, so let's, uh, gonna, yep, let's go. I've decided that it is going to be um, a th in the same world as the Masks game from Happy Jacks, but it's going to be a completely different city, like, the other side of the country or something. So, like, they were mostly, like, uh, Halcyon City. Let's say we're, like, on the opposite coast of Halcyon City, so... You might have heard about them on the news, but interaction you'd have with them. But it's in the same world. So we're riverfront, oceanfront. I'm thinking that it would be like uh, lakeside. Lakeside. Like a large lake, like um, that's what I'm looking for. One of the Great Lakes. Michigan. Lake Michigan, yeah, like Erie, one of those. Um, I did like the. I, somebody came up with Centropolis. Yeah. I like that. So I think uh, we're going to go with that. Yeah. It's it's a medium-sized city. It's not as big as like an LA or some city or metropolis or anything like that. It's sort of like a medium-sized. It's pretty much as much as I've got so far. There are heroes already. Heroes are not a like uncommon thing. The city has three or four major heroes already. I haven't come up with them yet, but if I need to, I can. A legacy, and they need a, a protege or a protege or something. We can come up with that if you want to. Okay. Who okay. Legacy four. Um, it's going to be a shield type company. Works with or superheroes, whatever you want to call them. I haven't decided yet what to call them in this. Um, and. Gotta find an like shield. shield. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, I've, I've been trying to think of one. Something I don't want to go with is like armor. Cause oh, Aegis. No, that's Proby Tim. Aegis was, was already in the book, so I'm gonna. Go. Make Let's see. Work. I think there was one online that was actually pretty good for working on acronyms for that kind of stuff. Pretty good with coming up words for the acronym, but I I'm, was trying to come up with the acronym to start from, and I couldn't think of anything. Aura, Halo. We start with C because it's part of the Centropolis, so. Metropolis. Well, is it city based or is it world based, nation based? The eight Aegis part in uh, in the book <laughs> is are they nation based? Are well, the thing is in the book it's pretty much all based on Halcyon City. It's kind of its own entity, but we could assume it's nation based or, or something similar because Aegis is kind of like their version of Shield. If we were to do something similar, maybe it's yeah, we'll do ours like city based. It's like smaller than Aegis. Yeah, buckle. Like, you know, it's kind of like maybe like something uh maybe the police equivalent of the city police equivalent of like a SWAT team for supers essentially super heavy when uh, when um Jim Gordon was taking on the Batman suit like that's probably well it's like okay they got to step in for law and order dealing with the silver age stuff squad, also known as the missiles Missiles? Oh, misses. Oh, okay, okay. He's making a comment uh, for L L5R. <laughs> Mantis clan. <laughs> <laughs> Who did <Mantis> this? <laughs> <Clan plan>. <laughs> <laughs> The man, this I was referring to, by the way, was from the really old TV show. He was a, a superhero in a suit. The Avengers? No, there was a there was a hero called Mantis. <laughs> oh yeah, the man from Uncle. Ah. Uh, 
I watched that movie the other day. It was really good fun. It was really good fun. I watched um, The Hitman's Bodyguard the other day. That was pretty good. It also wasn't bad, actually. I thought it was going to be much worse, and it really wasn't. I was hoping like, for a little bit more humor, because that's how they played it up for the promos, but uh, I enjoyed it. Jokes in the promos. All right, um, so we have our city. Uh, star, Special Tactics and Rescue Services. Almost there. Where is that from? Stars. I'm looking yeah. for here. Then we have to call it Stars. Stars, you, you pinged a memory there, but uh, I don't know where it leads. <clears throat> Resident, Evil. Resident Evil. Oh, those guys. Oh, yeah, that one works. That's fine. Alright, cool. Ooh. How many members did it have? Did it have 45 members? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Special uh, division, yeah. de definitely. <laughs> they have 45 squads. And the, the, the last one, Funny, called, yeah. called 45, is the elitist of the elitist squad. You oh, hold on, no. You start starting squad one and you will Did anybody here ever watch uh, or know about Get Smart? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or well, actually, even, actually, even James Bond works too. You know, their agent, whatever, with a number. Yeah. Colt, your agent number is Colt and a number. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Vigil's number, like his call mm -hmm. sign, could be Colt forty-five. Oh, that's that's got to be yeah. agent. Uh, 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 that's got to be his uh, direct like line. That's got to be the badass badass. Yeah. I wish he was that cool. He's not that cool yet. <laughs> and maybe that's your um, protege uh, person you're trying to be become the uh, legacy guy. I like yeah, like I want to become like a Colt Forty Five. Like that's my yeah. eventual target. That'd be cool. Excellent. For that he can be then for now. What's what's a sad Colt like Colt Twenty Two? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Colt Twenty Two shorts. Cold one. Not long, not twenty-two long rifle. Definitely shorts. Okay, that's uh, that maybe, maybe that's what uh, agent calls him. Because he knew me. He's got to know me since he rescued me years ago, and even like then, he's probably never fully like I haven't earned his respect yet. So I've still got that gruff. Awesome. Okay. So Colt maybe, 2 and um, Colt 22. Just on the bio. <laughs> Be annoyed with you, he uh, might call you Airsoft. <laughs> Only when I miss. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, like a graduation <laughs> system. Like you start off at Noof, and it's like airsoft. And New then, enlistment, uh, yeah. uh, recruitment force. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Nerf. Yeah. <laughs> we got the uh, agency taken care of. So that, that pretty much, I think, takes care of most of the world. Um, one thing with this group, unlike the podcast, is I do want you guys to have like been together for a short time before we start. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and have some of those uh, relationships established. Double off. That aside, is anyone playing a legacy? I need to know now. Which might become a legacy. So. Uh, well, what we could probably do is we can uh, go around and everyone introduce their playbook and. 
Got the names and stuff. I, I believe there is actually a suggested order in the book as far as for Yeah, that. there's an order. Well, that's for the um for the team origin. It's the team origin section. So I haven't read that section either. So I'm reading about like moves and things. Yeah, well, it's pretty um pretty standard. So we start with um, a basic introduction to each character, and uh, then we do because each character has to answer their, their their they have particular questions that they have to answer, and then we get into. Um, when our team first came together, that's the, the group questions where everybody has a, it, the specific order and so on. Then we do relationships and then we do influence. Yeah. Flipping to that page for us right now. Yeah. Go along. Before, before we start going through that, why don't we go ahead and just... Uh, everyone kind of go through their basic character to see if it runs over top of anybody else which it kind of sounds like we were already discussing before but let's just double check the here um i don't think he's still just listening in on his phone so let's start with you uh d spot oh okay all right so the um normal name for my character is jason blake and his hero name is Fracture. His ab he, he's playing a doomed playbook. And his ability is to basically to break things. His touch, or like if he really pushes it, his proximity causes structures to crumble, uh, bonds to break. Uh, if, he, if he pushes his hand against a concrete wall, the concrete wall will start falling apart and collapsing. So that's his, his ability. He, he destroys things and breaks things. Um, he is an yeah. Oh, cool. All right, um, Lloyd. What about you? What have you come up with? Because I don't think I've heard your character concept yet. My name is Daria Shakik, but my hero name is Debbie Downer. I'm an Indian woman, about of fifteen years of age. My parents are Mr. and Mrs. Amazing, who one has a part of telekinesis, one can manipulate elements, and they were expecting something great and powerful from me, but instead. When my powers kicked in, all I could do was negate, was basically power negation. I can turn other people's powers off or down. So because of that, I've been rebelling against my family because I always wanted to be a superhero and I didn't get a chance to be that. So I've moved out of the home. I've kind of gone to live on my own. I'm like, screw you, mom and dad. Just because I'm not as cool as you doesn't mean I have to be. I'm in my rebellious. F and that's why. Okay. And that is the Delinko playbook, right? Yep. We'll move on to Jin Human, who looks like he's playing Hex. Not fully decided on the hero name, but uh, it works for now. Uh, basically, I'm playing. You've all heard of the uh, the uh, seventh son of a seventh son will be a great wizard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. My character took the other route, seventh daughter of a seventh daughter, and then the seventh child was supposed to also be a daughter, except I came out a boy. So uh, I've got a whole bunch of uh, female magic coursing through me, aching to get out, and uh, it is uh, all I can do to control it, and it's making changes I don't really am not fully uh, happy with. So That is Nova, right? Nova Playbook? Yes. Nova Playbook okay. uh, and basically uh, magic and sorceries. Sure. All right, and then uh, let's go with Stockjack. What are you looking to play? Um, I'm going to probably be using the Protégé playbook. I think that's probably the best fit, and I'll be playing as Vigil. Um, real name is going to be Robert Barton. Uh, he's basically the eldest son of a family that's lived in Centropolis for quite a while. And when he was younger, there was an incident um, at his father's tech company, whatever. I haven't come up with a name for it yet. I figure if we have one in the narrative later on, I'll just throw it in there. Um, where he met uh, Agent Utwu, uh, who more or less rescued 
uh, Lee Barton at the time, and that inspired uh, Robert to more or less try and join the cult uh, after, you know, that's his big game plan right now. So he's currently uh, part of, I guess, Nerf to hopefully you know, get enough uh, experience that he can join Colt and hopefully eventually work and step in the shoes of his uh, hero, uh, Agent Altwild, who's Colt 45. Gotcha. Okay, great. So though, now we know kind of where everybody's coming from. Looks like we've got uh, a Janus, a doomed delinquent Nova and protege. So that sounds a pretty good group to me. See what's next in here. We got the introductions out of the way here. Team first came together. Let's go ahead and start. Again, we'll start there with the uh, playbook. Your first team first came together on yours. Mentioned the specific playbook, it cut out. There it is. It was doomed. I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, B spot and the uh, actually, the other uh, on his, the um, well, the Janus is supposed to go, then the delinquent, then the doomed. Oh, there's then, a particular order, yeah. Yes. Um, the mass GM sheet has the order. I have that up. I from, didn't see that in there now. From the map. I side? think I have that somewhere here. Yeah. The, the GM one? So. Yeah, the GM do one. Do you want me to put it in the, in the what's called the, um, the, the folder? Yeah, you I can, can do, do that. Right now. I'll so, do it right now. I didn't, didn't realize that was on there. Okay, so you're right. Janice does go first. So I guess we'll have to, uh, here, Flying Jackal, and you want to type it in. Oh, the Nova goes before him, actually. Um, I think. Yeah. Is it the first? Uh, yeah. I was going to say if we want to, if we want to just as a group answer some of the ones from the playbooks not being used, we yeah, can actually fine. go in the full order. That's actually a fantastic idea. Yeah. So the first one is bull. We defeated the dangerous enemy. Who or what was it? What about if it was an enemy of cool? So if Colt is a organization that specializes in taking things down, it has to be a really smart enemy. So can we have a Doctor Doctor Evil kind of character kind of type? Uh, or Yagami? Maybe it's someone like uh, who just has their own sense of justice and doesn't like Colt. Oh, there we go. Uh, Doctor Winchester. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's British. That's what makes him suck. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I'm not voices though, so that might work. Alright, so it's uh, a singular uh, villain and he maybe had some minions. So it's a super villain. Well, yeah, it'll have to be a super villain. Yeah, it does say what well, dangerous enemy. So yeah, it would have to be probably um a low powered enemy. Yeah, because what we would have just been just uh, had a new robot used. Possible? Yeah, it could be like um from X Men. I like the Colossus, or not the Colossus, what are they called? The Sentinels? Yeah, they're like the Sentinels from X-Men. Um, well, if we're in high school, how about uh, the rival team's mascot was actually a super. There you go. I like that. Yeah, that sounds good. Good game point. Got so a that, that's a good... Game got a little heated, and, you know, and, you know we get a chance to destroy stuff. <laughs> you're from you're in Centropolis, so the rival, the Topolis <laughs> city would be Edgewater. 
<laughs> Edgewater works. Yeah. And the Edgewater Eagles. Ready. Rival City. <laughs> Edgewater Eagles. Dip it in the chat, but for some reason it hasn't popped up yet. Here it goes. So Edgewater Eagles, their mascot. Doesn't do anything for the mascot. You could, then the mascot would transform into what it is. Yeah. What do you think? Like a robotic eagle? Like a bird person? Yeah, it could be like a like a hawk man kind of person, kind of thing, like an eagle man creature. We'll still keep it with the Edgewater Eagles. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So then the next one is the is uh, the Nova. Ah, here we go. Starting things off. We destroyed our surroundings in the fight. Where was it? What did we destroy? Well, it was a football game. We destroyed the high school stadium. How does that sound? Perfect. Works. Stadium. It was an away game. Uh, well, it would still be in a stadium. Uh, so it, it, what I'm saying it's going to be the home. It, it's going to be your stadium. Yeah. The right. home stadium. Yes, it, it was our homecoming game. That's why tempers were running high. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <clears throat> well, that'd be the outsider, which no, we don't have. So it's we didn't trust each other at first, but that changed. How and why? Hmm. That's so that's trying to get people out again. That came out broken. Can we try that again? Didn't even catch who said it, so I'm not sure who to uh, prompt. Uh, maybe we we came together out of necessity because if it's a stadium, it was probably, you know, because things go wrong. It's probably an indoor stadium, so there was probably collapsing buildings. That's talking it out. It's like just have to get it as many people out as we could. The the wouldn't be indoor. environment that we kind of work together. I don't think it would be indoor. I, th I like the, like the idea of it better being outdoor because of the the eagle thing. He, that way, yeah. he could fly around a bit more. Oh, um, that's like ski as well, yeah. uh, the stands were falling, and you guys had to help the the fans in the stands. In premise with it that, it took all of us. Uh, who, it, it took all of us working together to hold the stands up long enough for the people to get off and away. I like that. Yeah, it was a big rivalry game, so the crowd was, you know, tens of thousands. You guys were all there because of whatever reasons you would normally be there within your character. Yeah. It's our high school. We gotta show spirit. <laughs> we gotta show spirit. <laughs> we show spirit, though. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then the next one is going to be the Janus. Save the life of someone important either to the city or to us. Who was it, and why are they important? I think Jackalope can type something in for that. the coach who happens to be the favorite teacher I want to say that maybe perhaps um, the quarterback is the mayor's son so in the in the tumult we probably saved the mayor him. I, yeah the mayor he went to go see the game and so we managed to protect him from all the danger I like that because that works with my answer I like that I like that 
Pyro. Benny. Uh, repeat that again. I cut out, but I was just saying. I was just asking. Uh, question. Well, he's the one that suggested it. I think he likes it. <laughs> you did? Okay, sorry. I didn't realize you were talking now. Uh, it's not uh, like we're on the way back because we're still on the road. And if I have it on push to talk, so I've been listening and can basically just jump in for brief seconds. <laughs> I did not realize that. Sorry. So, okay, yeah, then we'll go ahead and go with the mayor's son. It's, uh, was, is the quarterback, so he was there and you saved him. Blinkwent. So. We fought, we totally broke some major rules to win the fight. What rules were we breaking? Whose rules were they? I've been thinking about this, trying to think. What would a, what would be really cool to break in the middle of other than other than cheating in the football game to entice them to fight or something? I don't, can't think of it in my head. In a scenario where violence is codified. <laughs> well, my first thing is you know since you're in a a world where superheroes and superpowers are common, I'm sure that school grounds you're not so, allowed to use your powers at school at all because the people that have powers will go to school. Okay, side notes. You're not allowed to use powers at school because there are things there regulating power use. Like there's like a cult's watcher that checks out for power use and they weren't registering on it but we would and if we and if i didn't break it down we'd get in trouble for using our powers and they'd come and stop us or something something similar on that level you know it stops us i like that idea like, that. like they have like power negation power yeah that makes yeah, a lot okay. of sense because it yeah. especially since it's a game they wouldn't want anybody to use powers in a game so like it'd be like a negation field sort of thing that they have yeah, so I, we were like, yeah, fuck that. We just broke it, so we can use it. Yes. I very much like that idea. Okay. Well, that adds so an interesting were... twist, too. Uh, sorry. That's an interesting twist, because something about the Edgewater Eagles um, able to subvert that while it was on, too. So something's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, which is weird and cool, and something the Beacon will bring us in a minute. They Super were cheating power. first. <laughs> That's our story, and we're sticking to it. Yeah. <laughs> we paid a high cost for victory. What was it? We lost the game. No, more than that. Uh, we destroyed <laughs> the stadium, and a team can't be a team without a stadium. So right now, uh, the high school does not have a football franchise. Uh, I can I can I counter that by saying that we were no the school is no longer allowed to play football period because we broke the rules. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I was gonna say that and everyone been, hates us for that because we're like a qualified. Yeah. They've uh, ever been out. They're out for the season at least. And of course. Now, can we can we make it that they were banned from playing football for a year because because then the school will hate us for being the ones responsible for taking away that's our like people yeah, pretty much like that's what I was getting at. Yes. That's what I was Banned from at. football for a year, banned from playoffs for another four after that. Yeah. Okay, we don't have a legacy. So that one, that question there is, all things considered, we did well and impressed an established hero. Who was it? Why not uh, Barton? See. Maybe, uh... uh well, cool, 45. Apex. <laughs> Wait, well, we... Yeah, why not call 45? Could it be Colt 45? Yeah, can we make it Colt 45? The whole of Colt 45 is impressive. Colt, just the actual guy, Colt yeah, 45. Yeah, the actual guy. And that's... Oh, yeah, actual guy. ...into Colt to start training. Ooh, yeah. Periodically putting notes into the chat so that I remember what what we're talking about here. I go back and listen to this as well. So yeah, go to make my notes. Formed. We don't have a transformed, right? 
Nope. 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 Hire from plenty during the fight. One in person. One important person in particular now hates and fears us. Who is it? The principal. The cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> The head cheerleader hates everyone. <laughs> she doesn't it, actually hate. Could, it, it actually could be the oh, mayor. The we can say that his yeah. son was a senior, so this was the year that he was supposed to like move on to college on a scholarship. And now he I like can't that. because no one can see. Like He can't play for the rest of the season. Well, if we have the mayor... Oh, yeah, that would... We, yeah. we have the mayor as the guy we saved, and, and we impressed. So I was thinking, uh, why not the principal? And... He hates us, but he can't really do anything because we saved the mayor. So he can't kick us out or anything as yet. I like that with the, with the mayor, though, because you save the mayor, so that would maybe get you some abilities later to you know cash yeah. in some favors because you saved his life. Yeah. But you also ruined his son's career. I don't want to give you anything. Maybe the son hates us, and the son has, because you know his father is the mayor, he probably has connections his himself was a football that the mayor player. might not know he's using. So his son was a football player, exactly. Yeah, so his son would hate us. But the mayor's wife anymore. loved us because uh, she didn't want her boy in football anyway. I like that. <laughs> he, he now can't play for the rest of the year. They've been banned because of us. Right. So, like, the, the son will hate us. The QB uh, probably try to, you know, subvert way he can either in school or because he is technically the son of a you know city official as minor cloud or ways to you know get information that he shouldn't or might be like supportive of us that does not mean it is in any way shape or form both in school and outside of school and with like like a uh, facebook or whatever social media that could be really you know problematic for us just kind of not like us to begin with, with then. Uh, that might be too close to uh, reality. <laughs> I like the I like the mayor's son idea. Does, does anybody dislike that? No, no, I, I, I like that because I think it works. You know, yes, like, it um, does work. Yeah, the, because the mayor likes us, there'll be a limit on how much his son could do, but he'll, he still hates us, so he's still going to needle at us for a laughter. And we're always going to have to watch out for him. That's that's I like that. Those names, Troy K. Maxwell. Yeah. Troy K. Maxwell the second. Right. Excellent. Uh, could even uh, go further, make the mayor the third and the son the fourth. I and everyone calls him Ivy, or we do, which he hates. <laughs> And you know what? I like that too. Yeah. Or actually, um, make the mayor the second, and the son the third, and people could call him Trey. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> or we can keep him as two, and of course, we could call him Deuce, which everyone Deuce. Uh, says douche instead. Yeah, Deuce. <laughs> Excellent. His, his friends call him Deuce, but the people who don't like him call him Douche. Okay, I like that. And because this is Happy Jacks, we need douche somewhere in there. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, Protégé, you're up. All right, so let's see. Protégé, we stuck together after all was said and done. Why? How do we keep in contact? Why we kept in con uh, contact, I think, is, well, kind of we're on the receiving end of a uh, storm from our peers for a while, so we were unfortunately the only people that would talk to each other um at least in the school area and i think that would kind of action that way and in a way we kind of realized we're some of the few supers that are on our school campus because there's not many it was another form of bonding and be able to maybe talk about things that we normally couldn't how we kept in contact obviously through one i assume we're probably now been placed in a not a special class but well yeah a special class for special uh, individuals a little bit uh, because of our uh, powers and I'm sure I'll go to some kind of power aware meeting you know sponsored by our cult watcher after we uh, 
kind of ignore their entire protocol system. You know, they have to also be like, make sure uh, properly educated in that. Maybe have like a standing detention. Detention like, like a standing detention. Yes, but it's with like a, a cult watcher there to explain why we shouldn't use our powers that way. They claim it's an after school activity, but it feels more like after school program. Yes. It's detention. Perfect. I like that. <laughs> Lastly, Beacon, we found signs that this incident was just the start of something bigger. What were those signs? Well, I'll, we don't have don't, don't Beacon, do we? No, but like we can talk about it together. And I, I really yeah, like the idea of something about that Eagle Man being able to ignore the power negation that would normally be yeah. a really important thing. Yeah, that's all I was going to say. I'm down for that. Sounds good to me. You know what? Um, why did you mention that they're despawned? Right. You know, to this channel. She ever wants to pop in. Oh, cool. Uh, well, hopefully, um, provided she is not busy at the um, the con she said she had to get ready for. The con thing. Oh, if she ever wants to pop in and kind of like yeah. talk to us about the game or whatever. Yeah, that, that'll be Standing cool. invite. Well, I do know she said she was excited to listen to the to, to the podcast. No. For those who, are, who will be listening to this later on, um, I am D-Spot. I play the Doomed Fracture. Um, everyone probably should introduce themselves. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> and I guess Wait, I'll go next. Recorded? Yeah, I'm going to start. I'm going to record um, each of the episodes. Um, right now I'm recording video, but my video is just my screen. Um, starting next week, I believe, Discord's going to start offering video. So if we want to, we can, start, we can go ahead and do video, and I'll just post them like on my YouTube channel and link to it. If not, if we just want to do audio, then I'll just strip the audio out of it and post it on the forums under the uh, listeners actual play section. Yeah. So people can listen to it if they want to. Because Gina mentioned that she'd like to listen. I think uh, Jason mentioned he'd like to listen to it. You know, a couple people have, so. Shout out to you guys. Hey, Gina. One week to make a helmet. I guess I need to buy a webcam now. <laughs> Everybody has to start looking hot. <laughs> I think for now it's just audio, so like um, uh, that's that's why I said it out loud because um, stuff in the chat that we type, they will will not be able to see that obviously. So, uh, just uh, you guys could probably sound off, uh, so they'll be able to put a name to our voice. Make it easy, and we'll start at the top of the list and work down. So that means, uh, and Jackalope, you're up first if you want to go ahead and quickly introduce yourself. It is Flying Jackalope. I play the Janus playbook. My character name is going to be Benjamin Rodriguez, a.k.a. Lightning Rod. Uh, well, I think I did mine. Uh, D-Spot, I, I play the Doomed playbook. My character is Fracture. He has um, destructive powers. And Good. Give me a minute. Damn, son. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Lloyd. I'm Drug Dwarf in the Forums, and I'll be playing Debbie Downer, a power negation gadgetry expert. And a delim. <laughs> well, I'm Jen Human on the boards. I'll be playing uh, Morgan Lee, aka Hex, the Nova playbook. I'm Sir Guido on the forums. I'm going to be the GM. Uh. My name is Sockjack, and I'll be playing the Protege playbook. Uh, my character's name is Vigil, real name Robert Barton. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you go and check out the Masks actual play on the Happy Jacks forums, because it's awesome, and it's what inspired me to run this game. It got me interested in the game. Me also. 
got me to buy the playbooks. <laughs> Shout out to Jib, me, Jason, and Kadave. We'll probably cut it right there and just leave that as, as the audio. Like a knock buff of the uh, the tr- trumpets at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's a, a really good audio clip on the Incompetech thing uh, site that I'm going to turn into like the theme for this thing. Yes. Because <laughs> um, to me, it sounds like the sound, comic comic booky theme. I forget what it's called right offhand. I'll have to find it again. Because I was going to make a intro for the Masks game with it, but then Bill obviously did his thing. And I was going to do Out of the Water. But yeah. <laughs> the thing like, you know, uh, join us for another episode of Masks on the same Masks channel at the same Masks time. <laughs> with this, I'll have to come up with a name for the game, though. I'm glad we did the uh, episode zero because a oh, couple more things I do want to go over before we finish, but. I'm glad we did the episode zero because now I have uh, now I know where I'm going to go with the game, which before now I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Well, we still oh, no. we're not done yet, guys. Yeah, we're not we even really done. Relationships yet. and influence. Yeah. To yeah. Oh, shit, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I won't stop it there. <laughs> I was curious as to I was curious when you said that because like I was thinking like um oh so they, so like you have a, a a length limit you can only put up ten minutes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Not bandy yeah. cam. <laughs> like uh All right, like what, what you can movie? um what you can look at is the the character sheets themselves. Like for instance the doomed the, the fillable sheets or, or the character sheets if you, if you print them out, it's that same exact order. We do the backstory, we just did when our team first came together and you see below that it's relationships and then below that's influence. So it's exactly that order. On the uh Oh, right, and we were supposed to answer some questions. Let's not have it in here. Hey. Yeah, um, every character has some backstory questions that they personally have to answer. Uh, did we want to back... Yeah. Did we want to go through them uh, for each of us? Uh, yeah. Because... Or are uh, we just going to wait and post them uh, online? No, I think we should go through them. Two and them now. Because um, uh, that, those go. questions are what are going to help us uh, thrash out relationships and influence and so on. Everybody, even, even outside of what's on here, I want everybody to have at least uh, some sort of connection to one, if not two other people in the game, in the group. So, well, yeah, for they, two, but it doesn't have to be. That won't be hard. That's relationships before. Yeah, yeah, relationships. Con- yeah, connecting to two people automatically. Yeah. Yeah. The first one we'll be doing is the Nova, because you're the first one that pops up in the list. All right. Backstory. When did you first use your powers? Well, I'm thinking just because of the way I was looking at it, thinking of uh, how he got his powers, I was thinking uh, basically since childhood, uh, you know. TK summoning toys to his bed or, or a bottle or whatever even as early as like one years old as long as he can remember he's had some sort of weird thing going on uh, who is the first person you accidentally hurt with your powers I'm going to go with mother uh, basically she was around uh, she's not too happy about the fact that I came out a boy and the fact that when I hurt her kind of basically We've got a strained relationship. Uh, she's distant from me, uh, and uh, we'll keep it at that. And who outside the team helps you control your powers? Well, I'm going to go with uh, one of my uh, six aunts, uh, just for the simple fact. Is Name her. Uh, Correct. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know more. Let's see. Any. Jenny Weasley. Well. <laughs> uh, Mar- 
Margaret, a.k.a. Peggy, went. Mm -hmm. All right. And basically, favorite aunt, the only one in the family that doesn't really sort of shun him for uh, coming out of boy. Uh, let's see. Uh, why do you continue to use your powers? Uh, I was kind of thinking, especially with the Nova playbook, maybe it's the fact that he's got uh, the magic is building in him and it's either use it or it will eventually escape and manifest something on its own. So that's why he continues to use them, because otherwise he wakes up and weird shit has happened. With that, that sounds good. And why do you care about the team? Uh, basically, I kind of like the team because uh, they're the only ones who don't treat me like a freak. They're freaks uh, too. Just well, it, yeah. Even to the to the extent of uh, uh, when puberty onset. Uh, he was happy his voice deepened. He wasn't too happy that he had to start wearing a bra. That yeah, sort of deal. Oh, okay, yeah. As I said, it's a female magic power manifesting in a teenage male, and uh, so it's coming out in unusual ways. Oh, okay, cool. So, so your character transforms into a magical schoolgirl? <laughs> That would be awesome, but uh, only when cold water is dumped on him. I, I, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking uh, being European instead of uh, Japanese. So, <laughs> is this just a curiosity? Is like kind of like the I, what's that old show? Witchcraft works. It's like where the the person's like, they, if they ever embrace it all, like they completely kind of lose themselves to the power. Is that something you're as a nova you have to deal with? Well, yeah, because a, a lot of the stuff is like. Uh, when, when, when I'm unleashing powers, like for instance, in order to use my powers, I've got to generate burn. And in order to do that, I actually have to roll low or the power gets away from me. And I mark conditions and don't get as much control. So, and it's like uh, the, the first power, Reality Storm. Uh, you just all this destructive burst. I can basically use that to engage a threat, but I also cause unwanted collateral damage unless I spend extra burns. It's 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 part and parcel of the Nova is the fact that, you know, I lose control and everyone gets hurt, so it's just kind of, you know seemed to fit. I like it. And I believe that was Yeah. So last your backstory. Last of my backstory. No relationships. Um, well, let's relationships last after yeah. everyone's talked. And also, that yes, yeah, yes, that um, everyone has to do the backstory. And in addition to that, uh, is there anything in the Nova you wanna just run over? Because like I'll probably just have to say one or two words about my um, what abilities I have, that kind of thing. You know that you have to choose stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, the uh, four. Uh, I guess you could say uh, powers or moves that I chose was Reality Storm. So basically that lets me use Freak instead of Danger to engage uh, threats. Mm -hmm. I chose Move just because teleportation is cool. I took uh, Boost so that uh, basically I can uh, actually give plus one to my teammates without spending from the team pool, which I think will be uh, useful. Yeah. And Overcharge, which is... Uh, uh, I can spend two burn and get an automatic uh, 10 plus on unleashing my powers, which, you know, is just awesome, so. Excellent. Um, you have some abilities as well. I think it's only first page. Well, my abilities, it, it, I get to pick one, and that's just, it's sorcery, so. Oh, basically, yeah. all, my, all my trappings will be, like, magic and spells. Oh, okay. All right, cool. And the next one, then, will be our Janus. I'm not sure if... Uh... Uh, Flying Jackalope. I'm home now, so... Uh, wait, so, backstory. First question, when did you put on the map? Um, I would say... Early on, he knew how uh, nasty people could be, like, in... Like, you know, he was always someone who, I guess, would step in when, when he would see someone... Born. And he had family, like, you know, little brothers. And he would see how people would always go after them. 
to get to him so he could no longer like step forward but he always uh, you know he always had that in him to want to help the downtrodden so he knew that he couldn't he, he can't be seen he, he, his, his person his identity can't be seen so uh, he would start putting on the mask to try to to be able to help people but not put those he loves in danger okay. and that kind of actually answers the second one too why do you keep your uh, secret identity you know he has family he has uh, people that he cares for he also has a job you know they don't probably like uh he has a job so he doesn't want uh you know that to get in the way uh to harm his you know he doesn't want to put people in harm's way uh so there's one who outside the team knows about your dual identity i'd say probably his little brother uh his little brother probably knows about him you know sees probably saw him uh sneaking out one night uh or probably name him. yep you need a name <laughs> uh, <laughs> she pushy <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like, my, my little yeah, brother yeah. who shall remain nameless he shall <laughs> he shall be named eventually so what was his name yeah uh <laughs> so he goes like I like Benny, but Benny always seems like a little brother name. So I was going to, uh, that's the first one that came to mind. I'm like, Albert. No, that's, I don't want Albert either. Um, we'll say his name was, um, what Rigo. Oh, what wait, last name's Rodrigo. That would be stupid. If, if you're Benny, how would be he, Mark. if he's Barry? Mark? Mark. Mark Marky. Hmm. Uh, so his little brother Mark, uh, he would see him. Uh, he, he he saw him uh, come in a couple times at night because you know he probably can't sleep. Uh, so he'd try to go into his room to to you know. I was like, hey, bro, can you let, can I sleep in here? You know, I can't sleep. And it's probably been a couple times where he's walked in and uh, either he's just coming in but through the window, or you know, not there. So he's probably the only one who knows that way. You know, he, he he's not always asking questions or going to tell mom hey mom you know uh benny's missing <laughs> um who thinks the worst of your masked identity uh, i want to say there's probably uh not a crime lord, but probably the leader of a of a small gang who I've personally been, uh, you know, I, I've been stopping a lot of the robberies that his that his cronies would commit. Probably, I've uh, I've probably well, like not not like armed robberies, but maybe like a couple of muggings. I should probably stop them. I've probably gotten in the way of a of a couple of crimes that his uh, his cronies would probably be committing. So he would probably be the one you know we'll say she she would probably be the one who would most hate my masked identity and we'll call her uh i don't know if i would actually know her name um but we'll say her name is janet last name jimenez <laughs> jimenez yeah j, sure we'll say j janet jimenez yeah we'll say <laughs> janet jimenez <laughs> 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 that's fine <laughs> help me with the names because it's hard to come by <laughs> um yeah so uh she will probably be the one who most you'll probably be the one who most uh hates my masked identity because i've gotten in the way of so many of, of her uh just this petty crimes you know so cash flow is not coming in as much as it used to before i was around and lastly why do you care about the team so Benjamin is kind of that kid who he's really he kept he keeps to himself a lot for the most part uh you know sits in the back of the class not rowdy per se but you know he'll just finish his work and put his head down you know I just uh, just want to sleep you know he, he has to he has to go to his his dishwasher job almost immediately after school so there's not really a lot of people who he uh who he you know keeps in touch with so the team is probably the 
you know, being forced to, to be in detention together. He's actually had a chance to, to talk to people, I guess, open up a little bit. These are people who, you know, I'm starting to trust because, well, you know, hey, they're they're super powered like me. They kind of have that sense of, of justice at the very least to, to step up. There's people, there are people he can relate to more than just, you know, everyone else. You know, uh, he's again, he's been trying to keep he's trying to keep his secret identity more than anything else. So it's really hard to it's really hard to to, you know, connect with people when you have these powers and um you know, it's it's really hard to make. You know, he's very hard to make those connections. So he's really, really gotten close, uh, or at least he's starting to open up to the team a little bit. And that's you know, they they they're people who could at least uh, put up with him, if not accept him. <laughs> and I guess for my abilities, um, my appearance isn't changed by my abilities. I keep I can keep my powers hidden. I have heightened physical abilities, strength, agility, and toughness. And my two unique abilities that I decided to do are energy, energy absorption, hence lightning rod, and impossible mobility. So I'm, I'm figuring, you know, like if, if I use uh, the electricity, like if I absorb electricity to power me up, I can probably move faster to get uh, to things quicker and things of that nature. Those are the ones that I decided to go with. What moves did you choose besides the mask? Okay. Um, I wanted to do mild manner and and I think I'm going to do I'll save you. Mild manner and I'll save you. I'll save you. Right. Perfect. Next up is going to be our delinquent. Oh, brace yourself, boy. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be good. <clears throat> All right, so going to my um, Daria Shahik is a is um the daughter of two like Omega powered heroes, Mr. and Mrs. Amazing. They one of them control telekinesis, one elemental manipulation, and ever since she was a child, she always wanted to be like a really powerful. She thought, well, I'm gonna be a powerful superhero. It's gonna happen. It'll be great. So when she turned 12 and she was told that she does not have any powers, it absolutely drove her mad. She completely started rebelling against her mom and dad, started doing weird things, just trying to find a way to belong. Her whole purpose is just basically to become a hero. And the fact that her parents said she can never do that has caused a rift between them. And that's what's changed until she... What she does for fun is that she hacks into cult. That's what she does for fun now. She wants to see what new equipment and gadgets they have going on because she's stolen some of the it and she wants to go anything else that's pretty good outside of the team her mom and dad really don't uh, they're still fighting about it they're always arguing about it she doesn't come home at night sometimes she stays out she wants to she doesn't just like go somewhere else but her bigger brother javier is always looking out for her because always trying to cover for her because he believes there's something in her but he's also got powers he controls light she wants to be a hero because she wants to prove to mr mr amazing that she can be just as good as them and also better and that they shouldn't just throw her away just because she doesn't have any powers. And she cares about the team because they treat her like a hero. If you'd like to know what my moves are, it is. Oh, I gotta get to this up. With your abilities. I first. haven't. What? My what first? My abilities. So, she has no powers, but because she has. What's well, She can hack into cults. She has gadgetry and power negations because she's grabbed the device that they use for. Slowing people's powers down and she's modified it into a gun so she can use it on other people to slow it down She can use it as a gun. She can use it as a touch item if she needs to she can manipulate it for like around an area And she was like basically she twists it turns her like a negation device to basically turn people's up powers off that way she can just shoot And then your moves All right, I don't care what you think whenever you reject my influence I plus are you watching closely? I can trick people. And criminal mind, when I assess the situation, I get extra. That leads us to the doomed. All right. Okay, so uh, real name, Jason Blake. I should have alliterated it. Uh, Jason Blake, and his true name is Fracture. 
so uh backstory when did you first learn of your doom now he he's an orphan he was um found by a corporation in, in by a written backstory i have it as saturnalia corporation the uh and brought to a facility he doesn't know if he was brought from overseas or if he was brought from another area of the country he, he, so he just knows growing up in this orphanage Come and huh? yeah and it's just um him and a couple of other kids uh it was like three or four kids. Right, so the purpose they were brought is because they had certain abilities that um, the corporation was using to do some research. Uh, so they, they would okay. work in a lab and like it, it would be like actual work, um, using their abilities to, to try and get the thing done. Which they didn't realize was um, something that was going to be weaponized. They found out and there um, was an escape attempt and the lab exploded. And um, there were some things that happened and he, two of them survived, kind of survived. One ended up in, in intensive care, that's um, a close friend of mine, Zoe. And I, I managed to escape when I regained, con regained consciousness. And after I escaped from that hospital, that's, that's when I first um, became aware of my powers because I was able to escape by um, just basically smashing my way through the through the hospital walls um, and just walking out. Uh, the doom, I learned of my doom because of the explosion. The explosion was going to kill me and what Zoe did was able to kind of freeze me in a state of stasis let's say so that um, my body is cons is just caught in a state of being just on the edge of doom just on the edge of um you know uh critical mass kind of where did you get your sanctuary right. the um explosion at the lab destroyed the the, the the ground floor of the lab and um i think it was like two or three floors up so the, the site was cordoned off and sealed off because they were working radioactivity and saturnalia didn't want anyone investigating it but the portion of the lab that was doing the weaponizing was a sub-basement and I have access to the sub-basement which is underneath the, the site that has been sealed off so it's um it's I, I alone am the one who can just traipse in and out of there because I, I have a way through the sewers and I just break through the sewer wall and break through the shield and there I am in the lab who do you oppose? Uh, why do you oppose your nemesis? Being an orphan growing up alone and growing up with only these three kids, um, they were the only ones I came close to. And the night of that explosion when Zoe ended up in the hospital, um, I know Saturnalia is to blame for that. So Saturnalia Corporation is my nemesis and I oppose them because of what they did to Zoe. Who outside of the team yeah is crucial to defeating your nemesis i'm going to say cold because um i as a young kid still have this um this basic idea that um it's a big corporation and and i i need the authorities help to take them down i'm, I'm not only under the illusion to that that i will be able to do it by myself however I don't trust Colt as yet, so I'm in a state where I'm trying to figure out how to get Colt to go after them. Like maybe I can expose uh, uh, some of the illegal projects that Saturnalia is working on uh, and send that information to Colt or something. I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, I'm just in that state where I'm just trying to figure out what to do. But I know Colt is going to, is going to come into that somewhere or somehow. Who outside of the team is crucial to defeating your ne uh, nemesis that's called and why does the team matter to you i grew up a loner and i'm still peace i'm still a loner but zoe was the opposite she was outgoing she was um you know filled with love for everyone and, she, and you know she just loved being in the world she she took me shopping a lot uh, and that sort of thing so 
with her gone, I um, feel it is my duty to reach out to people and to, um, you know, to, 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 to contribute to the happiness in this world by being part of something and forming relationships and growing you know, as a social person. It's not something that I am um, really capable of doing fully yet. Uh, it's not something I would have done on my own, but I am driven to do it for her sake. And the team, the team are very Im important to me for that. In fact, um, just as an aside, I was thinking that my diary could probably be letters that I write to Zoe about you know, how I'm getting closer to the team and, and she'd be proud of me, that kind of thing. Very good. And then your abilities? Alright, so um, my abilities, the basic abilities are, I have to choose two. So the first one is superhuman strength and speed. I can break things by touching them and uh, when I need to move, the, the air itself can part around me so I move without any resistance and I move really, really fast. I cannot fly, but I can run really superhuman fast and superhuman smashing stuff. And for my second ability, my second choice, I chose Vitality Absorption. Because what Zoe did for me, what how Zoe saved me, is that her power was shielding. So, and my power was um, absorption. So when the the um, explosion happened and radiation flooded the place, I was trying to absorb all of it, and I managed to absorb some of it. But she realized that if I had continued, it would have killed me. So she used her shielding to seal me into a kind of stasis and then she took the rest of the radiation and got radiation sickness and uh, hospital intensive care coma that kind of thing so around me is her shield and it's based on um regeneration and um sometimes i can use that to pull vitality and structural integrity from others uh, and use the, that energy to to keep reforming myself and pulling myself back from the brink. So vitality, absorption, Very good. and superhuman strength and speed. The doom signs. Now, um, most of you guys will probably notice I have a doom track, and um, I have doom signs. The things that uh, bring my doom closer, I have to choose two. One is overexerting myself. If I push myself too hard, try to bring that that fracturing power out of myself there's always this edge where it begins to um, go out and, and bam mark on my doom track the other thing that brings my doom closer is facing danger alone because uh i always have this thing in my head that zoe told me is um don't be alone too much you're going to begin to lose yourself so if i find myself with all the team and fighting on my own that's going to send up my doom track um, I get to choose one doom sign to start with and I really like infinite powers but I think it would make more sense for the character to choose portal mark your doom track to appear in a scene with anyone you want so I think it's going to be his ability to just kind of sense when someone needs my help and show up to lend an assistance because I think that's something that's his drive you know to be there for other people and be a part of things and to contribute Uh, the last Regardless. section, yeah, the last section is sanctuary. Uh, now, um, the doomed has a sanctuary, and this is the the sub basement of the um, the project site. So, you don't walk up to the front of the door of the project site and walk in. Um, you actually go down the street under a bridge, and uh, you walk into where the sewer is let out. And um, some minutes in there's a big hole in your wall and you go in you turn left and and bam big bright sanctuary but it's um you have to get your go us go through sewers to get there so it's it's not something people see inside of it is pretty nice uh we will role play that when i reveal it to you because um i have decided that i haven't revealed it to you yet because i like that i'm gonna like that scene where um i invite you back to my place and i lead you to the end of a sewer i don't know what's gonna happen eh? <laughs> Alright, so I have to choose three features of my sanctuary. 
All right, so the three I chose are a library of valuable tomes because it's a research facility. So they'll have like tons of files and information and backup and high speed internet access, that kind of thing. Uh, they'll probably have like an independent power supply because they want it to be off the grid so that there are no signs of a big power draw for people to investigate what they were doing there. So it's almost self-sustaining. It's a pretty neat place and, and well informed. The second thing is a power enhancement system, which is going to be the systems that they were using to weaponize the things they were working on. So there would be systems there that would um, be able to assist if any of the tech guys on the team want to make something or to turn something into a weapon or anything like that. And the third thing is a powerful computer, because of course they would have a mainframe, but in addition to the mainframe, the third person at the home, there was myself, there was Zoe, and the third person was Zeke. And Zeke's ability was to interface with technology and to be able to find, to more finely control, like the control rods and so on for the miniature reactor they were trying to build, and to, um, to have a quicker, quicker control and interface with, with the experiment that was going on. So when the explosion happened, his reaction was to um, merge his consciousness into the computer. It's not AI, it's not sentient. Okay. You can think of that computer as being the equivalent of OK Google. You can't really converse with it. Um, not fully voice activated. But, you know, it's somewhere there. It has some capabilities. And again, massive access to information. On-site and off-site. And I believe that will cover everything I have to choose. Oh, right. The, the downsides of my sanctuary. Because I have to choose two downsides. Um, tied intricately to my doom. It's the place where this all started. So that seemed like a no-brainer. And difficult to access. Again, it's not a place you want to bring a date. Um, yeah, you, so you guys will probably see that. <laughs> uh, any other questions, GM? Didn't have any questions. I was just uh, making sure you covered your downsides as well. Mm -hmm. And next up is going to be our protege. So I guess I'll just start with the, the backstory that again, kind of same thing before. Uh, I met my mentor, uh, Agent uh, Otwild, when they rescued me as a child, and essentially hired my character to hopefully, you know, join Colt when they were old enough and, you know, hopefully join the illustrious Colt 45. Um, training this basically, not seriously, but had thoughts of. 10 years old and it kind of became serious when he got in high school Earth, which, you know as like almost their version of the ROTC program to get trained up in it um, so he did that as soon as he could reconnected with actually um, agent Otwild through Nerf and uh, the agents not the other way around about learning more about becoming a uh, becoming an agent how to do it properly and through more or less going and not giving up, I think that's part of the reason why the agent agreed because he knew that either I was going to do this through Colt or I was going to probably end my own and, you know, probably get killed along the way. So, you know, I think that might have been a deciding point. I might have, without the, uh, the agent, I probably would have been like a beacon uh, similar to... Um, in uh you know like the uh, other uh the actual happy jacks crew though probably with even less positive results um the who else outside of the team knows about the training pretty much everyone in cold that uh at wills training me on the side um they don't necessarily or they did a few of them think it's a little bit odd because it's favoritism. They're not really fond of that, um, at least in their eyes. So there's a little bit of backlash, but nothing, nothing over. Dead. So probably would be done 
backhanded ways to get uh, Barton in trouble, though. Care about the team because um, unlike the Nerf program it, through the school, you know, just uh, collecting food cans. It's not just for, you know pretend emergency fire drills. It's actually going out and helping people, and that's you know big for Barton because that's kind of the whole reason he wants to be a, a member of Colt to go out and save people and experience. It's something that he wouldn't have any other what you know from any other way. So. He's definitely seeing that as an opportunity. Um, I know people talked about their families, so I guess really briefly about uh, the Barton family. Um, father, uh, Alan, works as an engineer at Rock Mill Tech Industries, which is uh, a company, probably one of several, that supplies Colt with some of their tech um, in durable metal alloys for their armors, most likely. Um, and... and he has uh, obviously a, a mother who works part time at the cafeteria at their high school. Help take care of his uh, three younger siblings. Um, let's see. They shall be. Uh, uh, oh no, this is harder than I thought on the spot. Okay, uh, Michael uh, and um, and. You're gonna need one named Clint, who likes to, uh, who's into archery. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! There we go. Phew. Say Dodged it. it. <laughs> Elaine and Kent, um, and they're pretty much in that order uh, of ages, with Barton being a uh, and. I guess just a little bit about his personality wise he um he's clearly in it to join Colt um he's not mean or anything he's not disrespectful but that's clearly uh part of the reason he's doing everything and but he maybe doesn't have a lot of friends inside uh the high school despite not actually having you know kind of freaky powers or anything just you know the power armor and all that he's just kind of freakishly obsessed with it so his, you know, you can look in his eyes and pretty much know he's only in. He's only there until he's uh, gone and part of cults. So, it's kind of made it hard for him to have long-lasting friendships. Backstory part. Oh, oh, uh, for protege moves, I went with uh, been reading the files. So that way, if anything's coming up, I may have read about it in some of the mentors' notes or in some of Colt's notes. So I might know a little bit more, be able to find out a little bit more from the GM in case we come against something that's just really out there. Uh, I chose venting frustration. So when I directly engage, uh, I'll roll plus or, uh, that whatever they deny, and it clears my angry condition. Tradition. Uh, when you give someone advice that you think your mentor would give, you can roll basically plus their label instead of mundane. I what about forgot. the abilities? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that part. Ah, whoops. Okay, so um, abilities-wise, since um, he's going to be part of Colt Forty Five, and he's you know working under Agent uh, Otwell, he has the shared ability of having Colt Power Armor, uh, which is basically a powerful armor set um, that the Colts use basically for you know reconnaissance and rescue. The Colt Forty Five obviously have a way more heavy version of it to deal with um, you know city by crises um, he, his access is kind of like the photo where it's is predominantly civilian in a few pieces he's collected that have made it so it's a little bit stronger than others it has like you know a simple uh, infrared and you know signature system for the lenses of a simple respirator that can work for probably up to and it's on a good day it's again it's it's old text so it's not necessarily always reliable um his own ability he has is hacking so uh maybe in part from learning from his uh you know father family he knows how to hack a lot of different systems especially when it comes to any kind of mechanized assault suits or assault uh since a lot of that's based on similar 
systems, a lot of the computing is the same, so around those. And the mentorability I chose that my mentor has that uh, Robert clearly lacks at this time is detective skills. He's not very, he has, hasn't learned that part of the, uh, yet he's really got to work on that. Um, and he's hoping, you know, and he's going to be able to get better at understanding that. And part of that's going to be more about his uh, teammates. Uh, and similar to uh, Fracture, uh, or not Fracture, I'm sorry, Hex's, um, I, similar to Hex's uh, idea of sending letters, he'll probably be doing simple, you know, reports to uh, agents at will after every session, highlighting a little bit about what he thinks was important and also something he thinks is key to be noted about these supers that are in the city. Good. And then the last thing from you is the mentor's resources. So I, let me know if you guys um, want something different because I was looking at this and the useful is to have a vehicle just because it guarantees a collective form of training for us. And listen, they, listen, 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 listen. Nothing is more fun than everyone going, guys, we need to go somewhere. Okay, um, guys, we need to put money together for a car. We, we need to pull. <laughs> Nothing is more fun than that. That is that is a quintessential mask experience when half the party flies there and the other half has to take the car. I, I, I've got my monthly bus pass. <laughs> okay, because well, my, my my idea was basically an old ambulance, and that would double as a med lab for us. But we like we don't have to do that. We can um, we have a few options here in case there's something that works better. Uh, Max has already has a hidden base with the supercomputer, so I don't know if those will be useful. But maybe having communicators, um, probably uh, some form of either badge authority or a. Uh, false identities might come in handy. What do you guys think would be most useful for us as a group? As a delinquent, I'm a big fan of false identity. <laughs> Saw that one coming. Insisted in that as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, it would be a way to distance myself from the family who hates me. Alright, false identities it is. That, we're yeah. definitely getting those. Because Suggestion. Is still I looking, up, looking, looking for me, so yeah. <laughs> That's vehicle and communicators, but you can do um, communicators definitely. Uh, we want to still have a vehicle, or do we want to let that kind of, I guess, play out in a? Well, you could always Python make skit. communicators for us later. <laughs> well, like we can have up to three items, so we can maybe stick with false identities and communicators for now. Would that be okay with everyone? Uh, it's it's your choice because either one is fine because we will work with with any it's a team man your strengths your weaknesses we all love it I know but I'm thinking like literally my character's like I have access to this stuff what can I use to endear myself to this group of supers oh okay I get you I get you okay I understand oh. um, what do you guys think uh, I, for, as long as false identities are in there the others are fine Okay, maybe I, uh, nothing matters more than a false identity. So I can take up the three. Uh, uh, Sagrita, would it be okay if I just took false identities and communicators for now, and then maybe that third one becomes a floater if we need it, like narratively later on? Um, that's fine. I'm cool, cool with that. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so we got that part taken care of. Third is going to be. Relationships, kind of like the the ones from the original Power Rangers. Just it's the one thing. <laughs> so they, they all have the same ringtone, and it's just like kind of annoying when people hear it. Yeah. <laughs> and and it just so, so happens that see. nobody asks why these five random people have the same ringtone and always hang out. <laughs> and always I'm sorry. That's your problem, Power Rangers. 
How about the fact that they color goddamn coordinated yeah. with the exact colors of the Power Rangers? How's that for a goddamn show? And they all show? hang out in the same exact place, same ex they're always together, and then they disappear and then Power Rangers show up. Always, co always color coordinated, yeah. <laughs> You know, they always text each other to figure out what they gotta wear. That's that's totally normal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Hex. Let's go with your relationships. All right. Uh, my two are: I hang out with Blank to blow off steam, and I once hurt Blank when I lost control of my powers. Well, considering it seems to me that the person most likely to have fun blowing off steam with would be our delinquent. Fuck yeah! <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, who wants to be? Who wants to uh, have been named? I'm not named. Uh, hurt. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I feel like I. I feel like my character would probably be stupid. Like, battle wound. Like more yeah, battle, battle wound. wound. A scar to show off to, to to show all those cult people you really are serious. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Excellent. Right. Now we got the James. What did... Oh, before you continue, you should do your influence as well now, since you've already done those. Because then it's fresh in your mind. Okay, uh, my influence is I get to choose either I'm a happy person or I'm locked down. Uh, well, considering this, I'll just I'll just say he puts on a facade of of, of happy and go lucky because deep down inside he's very introverted so I'm just gonna go with the happy happy facade so I give influence to three teammates I'm thinking uh, we'll go with uh, Debbie Downer uh, just because I uh, blowing off steam together uh, vigil because I feel guilty and now I need one more anyone got any suggestions well, this, this, you have to choose between um, Fracture and uh, Lightning Rod. Right. I would say your best. I'd say go for. I'd say go for um, uh, most called Fractured. Cool. Yeah. Because got family shit and stuff like that. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. Okay. You've you all you three have influence over me. Alright, so that's Hex. Uh, what playbook is it? I'm in, I'm in Nova. Nova, right. Guys, if you check the spreadsheet, all of that stuff is there. Crap, I keep just, just fill it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting till I'm done and then I'll fill it out. That was session zero. <laughs> Got Alright, Benny, what are your relationships? gonna end up like Bender on the Spark episode. <laughs> oh, um, sorry, the, so the influence you gave out, th that was influence that we have over you, or is it the other way around? That is influence you have over me. Oh, okay, well then these have to um, go in the other column. Sorry, I thought I had my mic unmuted. Um, I have two. The First one is Blank New Year from your civilian life first. I'm not sure that which one that one yet, but for you refuse to tell Blank your secret identity, I believe that's going to be Debbie Downer. Just because Benny has so many responsibilities he has to take care of, you know, uh, besides, you know, his job, he also has to do a lot of chores at home and a lot of schoolwork. And just the fact that, uh, you know, as a delinquent, just going around doing whatever you want, it kind of feels a little bit of resentment. Wow, you. harsh. <laughs> ah, <laughs> <but> very appropriate. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let's be real here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, that one, I'm, I feel like that makes the most sense to me. Uh, for the other one, I knew from my civilian life first, um, it's going to have to be either Hex or Vigil. Probably, yeah, it's a coin toss. Engineer. Um, I'm willing to take suggestions <laughs> at that point. 
There is a roll. <laughs> there is a roll function. That's true. Uh, so Guido, just um, check back. Well, you'll do it when you have time. But uh, some of these things are in your own place. I think you just put in that last one under my column. Won't put anything anywhere. And for Hex, his uh, influence. Those three figures have to go on the column next to it. We have influence over him, not the other way around. Didn't fill that out, he did. Yeah. Alright, I'll, I'll close it off because um, we, we'll check it after. Hey, I uh, rolled the tooth, so it's going to be Vigil. Um, so, I knew Robert, Bobby, before uh, we started superheroing together. Cool. Okay. I just gotta figure out how. <laughs> and lastly, influence. You look up to your teammates. They seem to have a super thing, fig a superhero thing figured out. Give them influence over you. That's that's gonna be have. That's gonna have to be Hex and Vigil. There's no way it's gonna be Debbie Downer. Oh wait, there's D Spot too. <laughs> uh. So, I'm gonna say uh, because I knew Bobby probably wouldn't have influence over me since we're both kind of knew each other. So I'll, I'll do uh, D-Spot and Hex. Excellent, nice. Fracture and Hex. Fracture and Hex. Alright, so that is, um, <clears throat> uh, what playbook, sir? Uh, Janice, yeah. Okay, cool. That's a vid, no, that's um, Lightning Rod. Okay. Is up next. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <Ooh, sh> hmm. <laughs> to that fucking dick. I just had to go through. Don't know where to go. <laughs> Don't know what to do. Cause you're all bitches. All <laughs> fucking hating on me for no reason. Right, I have been trying to. Imp I would say. Oh, I'm not quite sure who. I normally. I think. So it's a. I'm a bit. I'm a bit in between because I'm not quite sure who I'd want to impress more, Virgil. Or but Janus is the one who has connection to Court Forty Five. Oh, so that's um. That's Vigil. Vigil. All right, in that. I am spending most of my time trying to impress Janus because he keeps himself locked down from me and I like Awesome. Because he keeps trying to get about he keeps trying to bit hide himself from me and And me and Virgil pulled an awesome if illegal because I used him to break into Cult 45 what's called Cult Headquarters, not to <laughs> Appreciate that bro, thank you. Hey, like, if you just like help me, because I don't know how to hack. I mean, no, that's, that's how I got it. Like, that's how I got the infrared interface for my helmet. So I can't really say anything either. <laughs> and finally, um, I care way more than I let on. I give influence to three. I'll give one to Virgil. I'll give one to Janet. I'll give one to Virgil because I, I still kind of. And I'll give one to Hex. Because Hex hangs out with me and blows up steam. It's Vigil and Lightning Rod, alright. That takes us then to the Doomed. Alright, so for relationships, you told Blank all about your Doom and the danger you're in. That would be Vigil, because I've, uh, I probably would have told him, uh, asking him, like, you know, what do I have to do to get Colt to take these guys down? That kind of thing. So, uh, I would have had a, a, a conversation with Vigil about that in in private some time ago. So, uh, Vigil, G-I-L. Um, you'd love to kiss Blank before your doom comes. I think that would either be between uh, Hex or um the delinquent because of um because of the influence i'm gonna give uh, i'm gonna put it as hex 
TX. All right, so influence. These people matter for what you need to do. Give influence to, to two of your teammates. Now, the reason why I wanted to give Hex influence is because it makes sense that I would kind of identify with her situation being a kind of like outsider. And in that um, often alone, living on my own, under rubble, yeah. that kind of thing. So it makes sense for me to give influence to Hex. That's one. Um, and I think the other would be Vigil. So I guess the relationships and influence kind of align there. Eat something from Vigil, actually, so... Uh, you. I totally understand, believe that, yeah. Actually, as Vigil, I have a question, though, because you said, like, we're, you, we reported, uh... Are we currently building a case, or... Or like what? Like uh, you said, we did, we discussed this in the past. Do we currently have like it like a dossier? Well, uh, Colt would have a dossier on most organizations, regardless. Uh, when there was that explosion, like what you guys, Colt was interested, and because they wanted to see like what was going on there, if 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 it was, if it was a weapons test, that kind of thing. So they have been keeping an eye on Saturnalia. And um, but they have not been able to find anything as yet. But they are looking in that direction. I wasn't sure of that myself because I remember I wouldn't know. So that's what I um that's how that conversation started. I was trying to um, ask you for information. But of course you would recognize that I was, I was fishing for information and you'd you'd shake the truth out of me in some form or fashion. So I just want to make sure I'm on the same page with you on you know, because I assume my character is probably going to be, you know, being overtly evil, but being like telling cold stuff and then telling, like, being a liaison. So sometimes things might get misconstrued. I'm expecting through the narrative. So I want. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, um, I would not know a lot of what goes on uh, in your head because I'm not a social person, so like I would probably miss some cues. So trusting you may or may not be a good decision for me. Because nothing on the sheet says that it has to be. And sorry about that. And he drove away. Car went by. <laughs> uh, Alright, so I'll make a note of that and... Well, the teenage miscommunications abound, and that'll be fun, too. Yeah. Um, that, I don't see anything else that we need to do. Nope, that is actually everything. So make sure everybody updates your um, section of the spreadsheet um, on the Google Drive. What about make my sure relationships? Yeah, I, I just sent you a uh, request for access for that. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, you're right. Pr Protege was not done yet. Sorry, my mistake. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I had him. I had him pre-written, so I was like, oh crap, did I did I say these and realize it? Because <laughs> uh, uh, I had I had a few. I wanted to like a fifty-fifty. I think similar to uh, uh, lightning rod because it's between lightning rod and um, I want to say Debbie because since. Uh, we acquired tech together. I'm sure we've gone and tested it out on bad people. Damn straight. How did so? I got. I guess this would be a perfect time to test out that uh, that role system here. So it's just slash R. Okay, it works. Okay, so two and two was you and Debbie teamed up a few times before the rest of you came together. Debbie Downer and me, we apparently uh, probably with our brand new tech. I'm sure that was both very fun and then realizing this person is going to get me into so much trouble if I'm not careful. <laughs> hey, it's not fun, it's no danger. Mm. And then that, um, I know... I know Fracture went to me looking for help, but as an open secret, like, uh, or maybe something that 
Fracture as a character wouldn't know, but like narratively, what'd be going on is I'm sure the uh, agent Alt will more or less said, um, I need to keep an eye on Fracture. Ah. <laughs> the, it, you know, the, the dossier clearly states that they were making, you know, more or less human weaponry. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's kind of a big thing. So, yeah. Conversation of like, oh, we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yet do. That's going to be a little complicated, I think, between us. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> and so those are the two, I think, um, relationships I have. And then for influence, I have or business. If I choose playful, I give influence to two. If I choose uh, business, I give influence to no one. Otherwise, Vigil would be choosing to be business and give influence to no one, but that I don't think will be as much fun as going with playful. So I think I should get out influence just because that's going to be better in the long run, I think, for the dynamics. So whether or not this might be the same, give gadgets to, this might be that same kind of influence, like crap, I need to keep this person from leaving. <laughs> Vigil, I think the people that are gonna have influence on them will probably be lightning rod just because um, doesn't know why, but he seems familiar. So there's a weird kind of uh, uh, but just they seem like someone I recall and trust. So a trusting face, <laughs> trusting mask, very trusting mask. <laughs> I think the other one's going to be Hex because the sheer that that individual has is kind of terrifying. So uh, I, I will, you know, especially uh, after getting blasted in the uh, once on accident, like I have much more respect for that now. Well, that maybe maybe uh, you realize I don't have it fully under control yet either. Yeah, it's a two things. Like, yep, that she's very, very, or they are very, very strong, and they don't necessarily know how to pull their punches. <laughs> so, what does the scar look like? <laughs> I was torn between having a cool scar or having one that like was hopefully going to be cool, but then it like didn't like turn out pretty good. I'm trying to find a good like embarrassing scar, like on Google, to see if I can find <laughs> anything. <laughs> What about if it's something that affects your um, hairline? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no, I know what it is. Yeah, like I've um, I've lost like the hair on like the left side of my face. Yeah. So like now I'm, I look kind of, like Debbie loves it because it's kind of like I've had to go with a mohawk by not by choice though. That's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really cool, but it was. Not necessarily by choice, so <laughs> kind of kind of both cool and really like upsetting, because that cost me a helmet too. Really scary. I like the I like the idea that he's deathly afraid that Mohawks are gonna go out of style. <laughs> <laughs> who was your last influenced? It was well, Lightning Rod Hexen. Who I think I give out two. Let me double check. I'm sorry. Uh, I give out. Yeah, it says uh, give influence to two teammates. So I gave it. it to Ingrod and, and uh, Hex. In which case, congratulations, Hex. You're the team leader. Uh, actually, I was going to say I thought Vigil was the team leader because doesn't he have influence over everyone? Nope, he doesn't have influence over Lightning. Oh my! But you do. <laughs> All right. I'll have to think of something and put it in my diary. <laughs> <laughs> what, what has happened? <laughs> you know, whether our Captain America looks up to me. No. What's great about this is I could easily see Vigil being slightly jealous that he wasn't made captain. Like, he's not the de facto captain. 
<laughs> little insecurity things, and then like he's just gonna rub the side of his head that got blasted every now and again. Yeah, <laughs> a nervous. Tick. Okay, so yeah, like I was saying, go ahead and make sure to update the uh, spreadsheet with all the information. Make sure to up upload your character sheet. Um, if you want to, you can do your diary entry. Right now, you don't have to for this first one since we just started. If you want to, you can. If not, uh, we'll play again in two weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. I'll put us on uh, September, September 30th. 30th. We'll go again at uh, okay, so 6 p.m. Eastern. December 30th is going to be slightly difficult for me because I'm doing something important that day. I don't know what it is. I'm away. I'm away on December 30th. I can't remember where I'm away from. I'm away. So I might not be in the first game, but it's okay. Just pretend like I'm not there for that game and let's jump. Okay, Google. Yep, Being detained. <laughs> You're a delinquent. You don't do mind stepping anyway. somebody's not around. Yeah, Shut fuck up. your session. What's your planning? <laughs> fuck that. I'm trying to think. What is he doing on the 30th? I'm doing something important on the 30th. I'm going. Sure, went for it. be that important. Got it. April 30th. And the time? 6 p.m. Uh, Get ready. Uh, and just to confirm, oh, sorry, just to confirm, we're going to be doing this um, every other Saturday. Um, so like, yep. it'll be the thirtieth, and then it theoretically it'll be the fifteenth, fourteenth October kind of thing. I have something, it's either on the 14th or the 21st. I think it's the 21st, so that should be fine. But if that's in any way going to cause issues, I'll be sure to let you guys know ASAP. Awesome. Another good reason to have like five to six players because we can always still have a full team pretty much. Yeah. And then see, November 11th, November 25th, that's going to be Thanksgiving weekend. That might be a problem for some people. 9th. The 23rd, night, the day before. 23rd should be fine. 24th is... Okay. Alright. So, I guess we have a tentative beat. Hey. Yeah, things started. I will uh, get this thing edited and probably get it uploaded tomorrow if anybody wants to listen to it. To go back yeah. and write the note down. I, I will definitely be doing that myself. All right. Thank you for uh, GMing for us, uh, Sir Green. That's kind of it's kind of awesome to be able to play as a player uh, yeah. for once. Yes. Yeah, uh, my first introduction to Mass. I I'm really glad that I got to uh, to play the character I wanted to play, and um, this uh, I really started getting into it already. So I'm interested to see where this is going. This is gonna be fun. I'm not having a good time. Only one. I only have influence for one person. That's gonna have to change. Oh, Lord, I don't care about you, so it doesn't uh, matter. Well, considering <laughs> the nature of the game, influence is going to come and go like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. It's not the point. Y'all, no, you people trust me. I'm going to have to, like, earn your trust and then break it. <laughs> I see. What a Debbie Downer. <laughs> I've played with two of you guys so far, so I know two of you at least. You see, the thing well, look is, at it this way. You've I got influence have... over the leader. Yeah. <laughs> I almost gave you influence, um, Debbie. I almost did. Because, um... The idea would be that because you are not afraid to be out in society, that he would be in kind of kind of in awe of that. I can't remember, but there was a reason why I chose sex. I can't remember what, but um, it worked out for, for the best. Well, yeah. D Sport, you're absolutely right. I feel respect you, but you know what? I don't see your goddamn name on my influence list, so you know what? <laughs> that does not help me. It does not help me. <laughs> oh, I could have maybe given you a million dollars, but I didn't. Mm. <laughs> We will see what happens because influence is gonna change. Uh, a lot is gonna change. I'm 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 a dying man. Eventually, I'm I'm gonna wanna make amends to everyone. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, All right. Well. Eventually, I'm gonna need more upgrades to my suit. And I know I'm gonna have to go to Debbie for help with that. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, permission on the worksheet. Um, you just have to to um, share that out to Guido. All right. Well, um, I guess we can cut the recording here.
uh, for everyone okay. who's, who's listening somewhere in the future over the rainbow thank you very much for listening in and being a part of this um, this has been session zero we really do appreciate all the listeners and we really are looking forward to having all the fun of um, you know seeing where this team goes and we are looking forward to sharing that with you right. we are definitely hoping you're entertained by this we'll see you in two weeks <laughs>